What's going on, guys? Welcome back. We're going to try to redeem ourselves from that uh, sweet, sweet, oh, the 1-2 one, one, draft we previously did where we got crushed against some some Barosis, some Boros boys. Um, the first comic, I, I also promised some comics last stream, so now you're going to get them. And this is the first comic I have right here. Uh, we're just going to go through them. It's funny because all the green spots are probably going to be close to see-through. Um, this is just Spider-Man 37 from uh, 1966. It's good stuff. Cover and story. It's a Steve Ditko. Steve Ditko actually died recently. He was the uh, co-creator of Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. So that's pretty sad. This is the first appearance of Norman Osborn, which is why I'm surprised that this doesn't actually go for more. And the first appearance of the Robot Master, uh, also known as Mendel Strom, in case you guys didn't know. In case you guys didn't know that. Um, but yeah, this is also, when I bought it, I didn't know it was restored slight. If you guys can see that. It says restored slight, slight restoration. And so I emailed the guy and I was like, hey buddy, nowhere in this auction, it says amateur restoration includes small amount of color touch on cover. Uh, I totally didn't, like there's no way to see that. I can't, I couldn't even tell that it was, there was a small amount of color touch on the cover. And um, like I emailed the guy and I was like, hey, nowhere in your auction, it didn't say it in the, it didn't say it in the title. It didn't say it in the description. I was like, nowhere does it say that this was restored. Like, unless you actually know where to look and you see this small print right here where it says rest rest restored slight, you have no idea it's a restored. Like this is a CBC, CBCS grade, uh, which is a different company than CGC. Those are the two main grading companies. And CGC, if it's restored, will give you a purple label. This will be purple. So you'll know. You can look at it at a glance and be like, oh, it's a restored book. Um, for CBCS, it's all blue. It's either blue or it's blue. There is the same color. There's no difference. So you're only seeing um, this. So in, like, you, there's, you have to actually know to look in this exact spot, and I just missed it. But I was like, hey, you, you didn't really describe it. You didn't say it should, you should mention that it's a restored book in your auction. So I'm going to avoid is it here because I feel like this is not a good pack one. I agree. If this was whenever you cast a spell, I think that'd be great. I, a blue spell is pretty inhibiting. I'm just gonna take the Rhizome Lurcher. I think this is actually one of the best cards in the pack. I don't feel like Boros and I don't feel like is it. So I'm gonna go with the old, uh, the old tried and true gold Gary. Oh, and we immediately get rewarded with nothing, nothing at all. This is also not a great pack. Um, so anyway, the point is, anyway, the end of that story was that, uh, eBay was like, it's okay. The guy has not responded, but we'll refund your price for the book. And it was like 110 bucks. It wasn't super expensive, which again, I was surprised 7.0 first appearance of Norman Osborn seems, seemed like a good, seemed like a good price. I was surprised Norman Osborn is a pretty popular Marvel character. And anyway, so eBay refunded me the price of the book. I didn't have to send it back. And so I just basically got it for free. So it's pretty, pretty all, all, like the, the most amazing outcome I could ask for, I guess. I'm just going to take Hired Poisoner. Would have gone Is it? Were you here for the last draft? How about the how about the previous Is it draft? How about the Is it draft before that? Have you been here for any Is it drafts? So, yes, that is the uh that's the first one that we're going to show on this comic reveal stream. Hopefully I can I can give you guys little stories behind them as well if I have them. So, Oh, an Ocarina of Time Assassin. That's pretty good. See, now we're getting there. And if this Generous Stray or Child of Night comes back, or Mephitic Vapors, I'll be fine. I'll, I'm... Another Swath Cutter Giant, which is an interesting creature because you don't really want many six drops in your Boros deck. I feel like there's got to be some sort of blue mill deck somewhere hidden in standard with secrets of them in, in the mill. Yeah, I agree with you. But I feel like that's also true of all standard formats. I think all standard formats have three or four mill cards in them, right? Do you feel like you've gotten to use Jumpstart a lot in your previous season drafts? Uh, not in some of them. Some of them I have, some of them I haven't. Oh, a Crawl Harpooner? Oh, yes, please. All right. This is good. This is working out well. Third pick, Ocran Assassin. That was an accidental pick. I actually just meant to right click and it just grabbed the dude. Okay. I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> it's, it's bugging out, which is fitting because it's an insect warrior, so. Yeah, I can definitely see splashing Swath Cutter if you're playing, um, if you're playing like Celestia. It's pretty easy to get a red source up by turn six. Comic Rule Streamers, does that mean I finally get to hear your stand-up? Yeah, this is it. 
what's the deal with the crawl harpooner? Is it an insect or is it a warrior? I don't know. The dev champion's very good, but I don't really want to give up these three black cards for it. Nor do I want to really splash it. I'm probably going to stick with the pitiless gorgon here. Crawl Harpooner is standard playable. 100% standard playable. I just have no reason to take this and, and forsake these three picks. I'm just going to take Pitiless Gorgon. I have no pity. Also, look how many Death Touch creatures we have. Come on. What do you mean, Insect or Warrior? Uh, it was just a... It was just a Seinfeld meme. It wasn't really meant to be a serious commentary on the crawl harpooner did you get my message on mtgo uh matthew ori this is you got 20 tickets so we can wait till after drafting awesome dude i never knew who this was matthew ori you've messaged me like a million times at different points and you never said it was you so I literally, I was like, when I just get random messages from people on Magic Online, if I don't know them, it's like, it's like a phone call from a random person. I'll just, I'm not, I don't respond because I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. We got a draft going. Okay, good. I was like really worried that the, <laughs> it's like, wait, hold on. We're in the middle of an event. Um, yeah. If I get like a phone call from someone I don't know, I'm just going to be like, oh no, I have no idea who that is. I'm not going to answer that. But yeah, like if you're just like, hey, Rank, hope you're getting on soon. I was like, oh, all right. That's weird. I'm not going to, I don't know who you are. So maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But I never knew. Yeah, I had no idea. How would I have known that was you, buddy? That's hilarious. I do like strands. I think it's better than the random two drop because there's so many two drops you can pick up. I don't care about the guild gate. Um, strands is great in this archetype as well because you get all of the uh, generous strays and burglar rats. Oh, speak of the devil. Speak of uh, Mike's Mike's debt collector over here. I'm just going to take this guy. This guy's pretty solid. I'm a big fan of the rats. Like, if you can play, like, two rats before turn four like it just limits their options significantly i think you take uh, yeah we already have one of the death touchers like strands lets you kill seven sevens eight eights flying creatures like no i like the rat a lot better than strands or the than the three drop i might be biased maybe that's me i mean you guys can probably uh oh you guys ready the next one's a good one uh, Undercity Necrolisk is pretty good. I've actually grown to like this card a lot because you get so many of these creatures that you just make this guy a 4-4 immediately with Myth Menace, and it's pretty good. Centipede's fine. I think Centipede is a fine, fine gentleman. I am a rat lover, it's true. I didn't want to I didn't want to admit it, but I think the time has come to acknowledge my rat love. <laughs> rat love. Just want to say everybody's making you go infinite infinity in Magic Green Thai. Oh, awesome. That's really great to hear. I'm glad someone can profit off, profit off of these expensive Magic Online drafts I do. <laughs> oh, I joke because it hurts so bad. I want to take Sworn Companions here. In case we do splash the Abzan, I'd rather have... Eh, Celestial Locket's okay. Again, same reason. <clears throat> Look at this beauty. Here, here is the one we were talking about. This is Old Amazing Spider-Man number 50. It's the first appearance of the Kingpin, and the origin of Spider-Man is retold. This is a classic. And modern comics are doing a lot of homages to uh, to classic covers like this. Oh, the Child of Night did come back. I used to like Golgari Raiders a lot, but then I realized it's kind of shit. It's kind of a it's kind of a dirt burgle card. So I'm pretty much out. Out, am I? And I'd rather just have Child of Night for the life gain. The grade is a 7.0. 6.0 is usually my benchmark. Like I'll pick up anything that's over a six because it has good eye, eye appeal most of the time. So that's usually where I draw the line. Like if there's key issues I want to get, I'll probably just wait until I can find a 6.0 that's that's reasonably costed. Yeah, they're graded out of 10. Um, two Celestia Guild Gates on the wheel is pretty nice because if we do find some white cards that we really want to splash, but now we have a lock it in like a beast, beast whisperer, boys. Anyway, um, how do you feel about lockets in GR? I don't feel great about them. Um... I'm going to take this Beast Whisperer for sure. I will play them. I think if you have a, some decks that have like a high concentration of powerful cards, I don't mind playing them because they let you draw cards or they let you hit your, your mana much faster. So I'm okay with them. But they're not usually high picks in the decks I play, I don't think. I like Mausoleum Wanderer here. Rampaging Monument. 
What's a Mausoleum Wanderer? What the hell did I just think of there? Mausoleum Wanderer. Is that even a card? Am I drunk? Where am I right now? I like Rampaging Monument. We don't have a ton of gold cards, but we'll probably get them. I could see taking a Siege Worm as well, but you can, I think you can get Siege Worms a lot easier. For two questions, what's the most valuable comic you own? I mentioned that earlier. It's uh, Iron Man 55, I believe. First appearance of Thanos at 8.5. Um, two, what's your address? <laughs> oh, well, this got awkward real fast. Um, so as I was saying, I'm going to take this Rampaging Monument. I'm just going to highlight it so I can finish this 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 dialogue here um i was saying that there is a lot of oh mausoleum secrets is what i was getting confused with maybe mausoleum wander is that the spirit oh it's the spirit dude that's what i was getting confused with okay but there's a lot of homage covers being produced and this is a recent venom number one cover and as you can see it's just an homage they're both just an homage of each other so that's pretty sweet um but yeah, this one's not worth, this is probably worth like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. But the ASM number 50 is a little bit more. Um, This pack is not great. Hired Poisoner number two, I guess. Art is cyclical. Well, especially when you're deliberately making homage. Then yes, definitely, cycl definitely cyclical. Whisper Agent's not bad. Hmm. I think Hired Poisoner is probably better than Whisper Agent. But this does trigger our Wandering Mausoleum. Mos wandering Mausoleum turnkey. Uh, you can take them out of the cases and read them. However, they will be not graded at that point, And you cannot put them back in. Matthew Ori, I will see you then, buddy. I will be here. I appreciate it, buddy. I'm going to take this Whisper Agent. I don't think about comics. How much does your average modern comic cost by comparison? An average comic costs like three, four bucks. Grading the great getting a book graded if you do it yourself costs about eighteen dollars. So for eighteen dollars, you send it off. They put it in a case. They grade it for you, and then you cannot take it out of the case. So, gatekeeper gargoyle is not bad if we splashed. Otherwise, it's probably just pigless gorgon or spinal centipede. We have one hired poisoner. We also have like we have a lot of death touch guys. I might just rather have the three tough the three power creature to actually deal some damage. However, pigless gorgon goes quite well with rampaging monument. Oh, I actually love variant covers. I'm a big fan of variant covers, and I have a ton of variants recent, especially virgin variant covers, which this is actually a virgin variant, um, which means there's no text on it, so you have no idea what it is. Like, there's no... But on the back, it just says Venom. Venom number one, variant edition. But on the cover, it's a virgin. It has no, no text, which is pretty sweet. I'm a big fan of that. Oh, we took the pack's favorite because Magic Online did not highlight the pit Pitiless Gorgon. However... There are two in this pack, so I'm just going to take one now. That's nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not cheaper to get them graded at cons. Like, it's the same cost. If you want to get a modern book graded, it costs 18 bucks. If you have a membership. It's 20 bucks without a membership. Uh, I'm not a fan of Undercity Rising. I don't think it's very good. It's usually a two for one i mean it's it's just a four mana prey upon most of the time i think i don't think the death touch has ever been relevant as far as having it on my creatures um so most of the time you're literally just paying four mana to give you a touch and fight so what's the most expensive physical magic card you own not much uh you don't pay any shipping well you have to pay to ship it back though like they you still have to pay to ship it to you you're just not shipping it to them because you're there i'm gonna take this because i don't care about the two drop or the three drop, rather. I'm going to take Conclave Guild Mage. Again, we can splash it pretty easily if we want to. It gives us some nice late game stuff if we uh, if we end up splashing it. And there was nothing good in that pack, so. <clears throat> yeah, like, if you go to a con, and, like, you also have to go to the con. Like, if, you, if, you, if you're able to bring 30 comics and get to a con, like, yeah, you can, you can turn them in there to get graded, but you also have to get to the con. But they're not going to ship you back 30 bucks for free. You're still paying return shipping on those, so. I, luckily, living in Florida, like, um, C CGC is actually only, like, 45 minutes to an hour away, so I can literally just drive down there if I want, which which is what I've been doing whenever I want to get great books graded. Um, we're going to take the Crawl Swarm. I think it's probably better than Dowser, and I like having the reach. 
of Floaty Boys. So would you say you're more invested as a comic book collector? Yes, I would say I'm more invested as a comic collector. But I like collecting comics more than I like collecting magic cards. I will buy magic cards if I want to play with them. Uh, whereas I just buy comics because I like displaying them. And that's why I get them graded too, because I think they're awesome to display. And they're just awesome to have as like self-contained collectible items that, that look good and retain their value. So I'm a big fan of that. Wild Saratok. Okay. Uh, I will take an uprising and put it in the sideboard for now, but like I said, not a big wow. That's a late. That's a late centipede. Does this deck help against flyers? We have crawl harpooner. We have crawl swarm. Like we have lots of removal spells. We have severed strands. I'm pretty sure we can pick up a dead weight in this pack. It's going to be the first pick, and our rare is going to be a fire mines experiment. That's my guess. Seems a little random. <clears throat> you are a late centipede. Got him. Wow, that was aggressive. That was aggressive. I think you should probably, probably calm down. So man, if you guys are, if you guys like those, those homages, I'm gonna show you something else in a second that I'm that I'm pretty thrilled about. I'll wait till the draft portion is a little bit closer to the end. Oh, a Midnight Reaper. Man, I gotta pass a generous trade though. There's nothing good in this pack really except for these two, and they're like not super high. So I'm gonna take this Midnight Reaper and be very grateful for it. <clears throat> Experimental Frenzy! I actually like Severed Strands here. I don't care about the Guild Gator for two colors. I'm really surprised you don't have any Golgari Fine Brokers here. Um, in Limited, if you, I mean, you should be able to take care of your own your own Midnight Reaper if you really have to. I, I also don't think you have, should... You should have, I don't think you have uh, too many questions, too many creatures that... I don't know what I'm saying right now. You shouldn't have too many creatures that are going to die to your Midnight Reaper to make him uh, a liability is my... Are they real with the next cube is going to be? I don't think so. I think it's one of those super short ones, but I haven't seen it. I, I haven't seen anything about But I haven't seen anything about it. I'm basically just making this up as I go because I have no factual evidence whatsoever. I don't know, actually. I haven't seen it. Well, they're not, they're not slamming the Screw Frank button yet. I'm going to take Severed Strands. I like having two strands in the deck. Oh, a Deadly Visit? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, there's nothing else in the pack. Maybe if this guy comes back, maybe. I almost like, I like Crawl Forgers better. Like, if I'm going to have a 4-4 out of one of these, this is a consistent 4-4 that gains us some life. I don't care about Golgari Raider anymore. I'm off it. I like having a Mephitic Vapors in my sideboard, but I also like having a Prey Upon in my main deck, especially with four Death Touch creatures, at least. Instead of just showing the comics, can you read them to us, preferably later in the evening with some cookies in my blankie? Yeah, I can see what I can do. I can just crack all my graded books open, and we can just have a little get to get a little little crack book get together. <laughs> Matthew Ori, I think Matthew Ori's still gone, but in the in his one of his matches, he's like, "Hope you're doing well, my friend. Worked hard selling that ice cream today." D face. So I probably should have known it was Matthew Ori at that point, but I, maybe I just missed that message. Uh, are you not reading anything currently? I read. Oh, I'm reading tons of stuff currently. 
Uh, I feel like I've gone over this multiple times on stream. You probably just missed it, though. I mean, I'm going to take this hatchery spider because that is an awesomely late fifth pick hatchery spider. Daddy Cube, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Another prey upon? I'll take another prey upon. Probably not going to play the second prey upon, especially with double severed strands, but. So. This is my list of comics that I'm currently reading. I'll show you guys again. Um, this is this is where I'm 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 I'm, I'm right about Avengers Avengers X X Men Axis right here from 2014. I'm catching up here. Um, and then this is like all of the stuff that's like, it, it should bring me up to current basically of the issues that I want to read. Um, and also like there's there's even more that I haven't added like the 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 immortal the immortal Hulk, Thor. Uh, Tony Stark, Iron Man, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I haven't been reading current stuff recently because I've been catching up. But my intent is to catch up. So, it's a it's a long road. There's about a thousand back issues that I'm working on reading right now. So it's not it's not ideal, but I, I should have comics to read for a long time, and that 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 is enjoyable to me. So, oh, a generous stray. Okay, so now we need to make some cuts. These are some late siege worms going around. Eh, I'll take a Forager. I'll play Forager over Vigor Spawn. Bigger Vigor Spawn. Vigor Spore Worm. I have no problem with indie books. So you have plenty of things to read to us late at night without crack. That's true. That's true. We can actually read. Yeah, I can read some. And then Iron Man punched the Red Skull in the face. And then we can just, uh, yeah, I read most of my stuff on my iPad. Because if I had to have like physical books, like I would just have no space and I would have no, I would have no chill at that point. I would just be, oh, I can take the Ceratoc out and I can take Crawl Foragers out. And Whisper Agent, I don't care about. And that was those are some pretty nice cuts. I'm, I'm a big fan of this deck. Looks good. It doesn't look busted, but it looks good. What happens next? Well, you'll just have to stay tuned. To be continued. Okay, so here's a story before we start this, because I'm pretty sure this is our deck. So recently... Uh, there was a storyline where uh, there was a character introduced called the Red Goblin. And the Red Goblin was Norman Osborn. Uh, well, man, Matthew Ori was on, man, on point, buddy. On point with that. He waited till the exact moment, and then he knew. God, Matthew Ori's great. He's a good dude. I'm going to add all these bad boys. You guys are great. Now I know who you are, at least, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew, you're the best. Thank you so much, dude. Really appreciate it. Um, okay, so anyway, the Red Goblin uh, was was Norman Osborn. I haven't read the storyline, so I just know what I've read from like news outlets and things. Red Goblin is a storyline where Norman Osborn actually uh, infects, I guess, bonds bonds himself with the Carnage symbiote. Um, for those who are familiar, I can't really. I don't want to explain any more than that. If you guys don't know who Carnage and Norman Osborn are, I know Norman Osborn. Are, there's no real point. Um, so that was a big deal. There was uh, Spider-Man between like 797, 798, 79, and 800 were all issues chronicling the storyline. So they were really hot. There were tons of variant issues. And um, they were just really, really hyped. There was also an, a writer on the story, Dan Slott, who was ending his 10-year, like I think it's 10 years, maybe even longer, 10-year run on the on the, on the the book, right? So he was done writing Amazing Spider-Man after this, after this storyline. And uh, so it was kind of a big deal. There was a lot of big, big things going on. And um, so this this is a book I picked up recently. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin, right? 
So it's 9.0. First appearance of the Hobgoblin. Spider-Man 238 from 1983. So one of the variants for the Red Goblin issues was Spider-Man 797, and it was a Matthew Mayhew cover. And it looked like this. So it was actually an homage of this one. So you can see, very similar. And I just thought that was awesome. I was like, this looks amazing. It's fantastic. But wait, there's more. Spider-Man 800 cam comes out, and there's another Mayu variant. So now you have all three of these. And I can't, it's gonna be hard to, to show them all, obviously, because I don't have that many hands, but yeah, super sweet. So I was like super excited when all of these came out. And I made sure to grab a copy of uh, 238, which is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin, because I thought they would look great together. Um, so I'm going to actually try to display all three of these, because it's a cool, like, like it's all three books, just, you know, the same exact, like, I don't know, uh, form. I don't want to say format, but I don't know how you'd actually, like, obviously model after one another. Two, two are the homage of the, uh, the ASM 238, which is awesome. You have assembled Exodia. Congratulations, you have won. That's all I was looking for. Actually, one, two, three, four. Do we want more? Do we want a second? Like we don't have any double black cards up until here. We do have Beast Whisper though. We also have Hatchery Spider. I'm gonna add one more green instead of one black. This deck looks good actually. We have a lot of removal and we have a lot of good things. Norman Osborne's Greatest Fear. <laughs> Goblin Slayer. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. If you have not watched the Goblin Slayer anime this season... Oh, I, interesting. That's funny that... Oh, that was you. Oh, you linked that. It is the Tron of Spider-Man. That's actually... A, that's a great comparison. Only no one is getting miserable by them. anyone assembling it on turn three. So... I will keep this hand. Who is... Oh, my go-to Spider-Man artist, you asked me. Um... good question i would default to bagley just because i grew up reading spider-man uh when mark bagley was the artist but i really don't know if he's my favorite interestingly enough so i don't know i'd have to actually think about that and look at some of my more preferable spider-man storylines Do I have a favorite modern artist and author combo? Um, I definitely do. I love I love Mike Diodato's art. I don't think I have a combo. Um, I'm a big Bendis fan, Brian Michael Bendis. I'm a huge um, Remender fan. I'm a huge Hickman fan. Hickman is amazing. Uh, Scott Snyder is also amazing. My biggest concern is that like there are artists like Jeff Johns where like he was he was an amazing art uh, author. But they gave him too much. Like, they literally were like, here, do everything. Do everything. And you can kind of see a point where, like, the Jeff John stuff gets really watered down. And I just worry about that with some of my more preferred uh, authors. Like, just don't, don't give them... Don't overwork these guys. Just give them enough. Just give them enough. And then move on. And I worry they'd kind of do that with Hickman. And I worry they might do that with Scott Snyder over at... Scott Snyder over at DC. Brubaker, also amazing. I'm a huge Brubaker fan. They were doing that with Bendis, too. They gave Bendis everything. Bendis, there for a while, Bendis was writing everything. And I really enjoy Bendis. I think Bendis is amazing because he, he has a very conversational tone. Bendis has a way of writing the way normal people talk. Uh, he'll write ums. He'll have people interrupting other people inside of dialogue. It's very, very natural. And I love that about Bendis. I think his dialogue is one of my favorite things to read. It's just fun. It just feels normal. And I think that's great. I would have loved a severed strands there. Get rid of that guy, draw a card. 
Doesn't Disney have DC? Uh, Disney has Marvel. Warner Brothers has DC. I'm going to attack with this guy. If you want to block, I'll just eat it. That is fine. I'm game. Yeah, I didn't think you'd block that guy. We're just going to play Crawl Swarm here. Like you do. Uh, Disney to definitely not buy Warner Brothers. That would be insane. Unless I'm missing some serious news, which I do not think I would be. Because that seems like it would be too big to miss. But no, definitely not. Uh, I also would be a little bit scared if Disney did buy Warner Brothers. Because, you know, it's one thing to have Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, and... Don't they have something else? Don't they have, like, one more thing? My number one X-Men character I want to see in the MCU? That's a good question. Magneto. Like a good Magneto. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Let me think about that. I would like for them to do an X-Men storyline where Cyclops is... Like, kind of the dick he is in the comics. Oh, I said Doctor Doom, but Doctor Doom is not an X-Men character, so. <sighs> this is significantly worse than this, but is this worse than this? I don't know. I think we can attack with Crawl Swarm. I don't think they're going to block, and if they do, it's almost the same as just killing it, so. That seems okay. Also, I can attack with this guy, too, and if you want to just block either of these four power creatures, I'm good with it. We should have played the land first, so if you do have to pump this guy, though, we can still keep up Prey Upon. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay, that's actually... Um, yeah, this is actually fine. We have to draw two cards here. Still keep it up? All right, all right. We're not going to... Clearly not going to use it now, but all right. Uh, Doctor Doom is probably bought in the Fox deal, not the Sony deal. Doctor Doom was a Fantastic Four property that was under Fox. Oh, Beastie Boy. We got Beastie Boy and Midnight Reaper, so if we cast a creature or a creature dies, we're just drawing some cards. Seems good. Yeah, that was just from hasty play and from also uh, just not really. Any 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 death touch creature goes with prey upon. We'll just kill this thing, but hmm. that is unfortunate that you would have that because now we don't get to draw a card. I was only four studios, right? There's Disney, uh, which owns now owns the Fox properties. So there's Sony which owns the Spider-Man properties, and then there's Warner Brothers. So there's only three now. There was four. It was Sony, Fox, Disney, and uh, Warner Brothers. But now it's just the... Now it's just the three. Two Marvel and one DC. That's not too many. Ooh. Ooh-wee! Also, Undersea Necrolisk is pretty good with two dirtled creatures and a... Uh, Oh, Shane's cards misses me? Man, Shane's is great, dude. I love Shane so much. We're going to try to see if this works. Viacom? What does Viacom own? We could have just waited a turn, but I really want to attack here. And we get to draw a card. So, what could possibly go wrong? Block here. Sack, make this guy a 4-4 four, four with Menace. You're going to draw two? Oh, you're going to capture Sphere, that guy. Okay. Can we sacrifice himself? Sacrifice another creature. Okay. CBS, Paramount. Um, yeah, but those aren't making movies. Those are... I mean, like, those... What are those? Like, TV shows at best, right? Like, what, what, what properties are under... C <laughs> what properties are under CBS? Oh, 
Also, for anybody watching on YouTube, if you guys are not a fan of comics, it's going to be rough for you. God. I mean, we could just actually sacrifice these to draw some cards. But right now, we're going to Pax Favor. Also, we can't, can't use this as a sorcery. I guess it doesn't matter if they're going to kill. I was like, I'd love to be able to sack a guy in response to them killing it so we could draw a card. But yeah, if it dies, they're going to draw a card anyway, so... Going on to, I don't really feel like wasting a Pax Favor if I'm just giving it a plus one, plus one. I might be tempted to sacrifice this guy just to draw another card. What's happening? Oh, you're just going to Radical Ideas in response. Radical! Oh, that's good. I don't feel like I need to do that right now, especially because they could probably play a better guy next turn. They have two radical ideas in the graveyard. Okay. I'm not a comic fan, but it's cool. You're still good background noise from our lunch. Nice. Appreciate it. Preach. I'm not a big comic book fan, but it's always fun seeing someone talk about something they're passionate. That's also pretty sweet. All right. Those are good responses. Good to know, guys. Good to know. Okay. So now I might just kill this wall because I don't feel like dealing with it. Oh, but maybe not. We got one, two, four creatures. So we can actually play this. And then we'd have one, two, three up so we can Pax Favor to kill this guy. That's probably okay, right? I guess we could also just... Oh. Oh, we're definitely taking 6-6 six, six Lurcher. 5-7 and a 6-6. Six, six. Seems good. Basically Cascade. Yeah, we're definitely going to kill this guy now. I was actually... There's a there's an illustrator that I'm really a big fan of. His name is Yale Stewart. Um, he does JL8. Or JL... I think it's called JL8. Yeah, JL8. And um, we were going to start a podcast about magic and comics, which is kind of funny. Gonna tell y'all it's sabotage. Yeah, they're gonna radical ideas here just to deal me those extra points. Yeah, JL8 is great. His work is really, really sweet. It reminds me of the old uh, Batman the Animated Series because his line work is really, really good. Who owns the Valiant brand for movies? I don't think anyone does. Also, in response to my own question, I'd love to see an old Xavier in the MCU, but it'd be weird to see anyone not patch. I don't think that's true, though. Um, maybe that's true. I don't know. I mean, I think we only look at Patrick Stewart because he's bald. I actually like Crawl Foragers in this matchup because they have a bunch of... Like, they're trying to burn you out. I think we can take out the Siege Room for a Crawl Foragers. That seems good. Who owns Hellboy? Hellboy is Dark Horse. Um, I don't know who owns Hellboy. I mean, Dark Dark Horse, I would imagine, but I don't know the uh, the production company behind it. Ooh. Oh, God, I wonder if you guys heard that. Oh, uh, this hand is great. Gonna tell them y'all it's sabotage. I don't really want to play Harpooner here when I know they have flyers in their deck. I ran randomly came across Jonah Hex in my library, and Jonah Hex is awesome. Yeah, Jonah Hex is a Vertigo title. Um, Ocarina of Assassin's actually not bad here because it forces them to... if Whatever they play has to block it, so it kind of puts them in an awkward position where, like, 
you know, if they want to play a rampaging, wandering ma mausoleum monument, then you know they have to block it. So Ron Perlman owns Hellboy, and I don't think that's true. The David Harbor pictures of Hellboy look great. I'm a, I'm a fan. I don't know. I, I'm I'm at a point in my life where like I'll, I'll give anybody a chance to uh, to do a new take on a guy, on a dude. It's really weird when they're like, before combat, all radical ideas. Why do you do that? Why are you, why, why would you do that? Uh, Vertigo is a part of DC. That is correct. I feel like we just run this guy out there. Next time we can draw two if, we're, if it survives. Don't disdainful stroke me, bro. They didn't. All right. I'm okay with it. I just really like Hellboy. Oh, I mean Ron Perlman. I get them so confused. Dark Horse is still standalone. Yeah, I I know. I meant who owns it as in the production company. Like obviously because like you know, Dark Horse isn't making, um, Dark Horse is not a movie production company, so they're not making Hellboy movies. Is what I mean. You know, just like Marvel wasn't, so that's why Fox and Sony have the rights to certain movies, because before Marvel was a movie production company, you know, you got to have some companies that, that make the movies, because, well, that's just sad that you would do that. I thought we were friends. I thought we were friends. So this guy, if they have, I mean, this guy's going to straight up trade for a Crackling Drake, but that's not what they're going to do here. Oh, it's going to trade for that guy all day well, that's fine not great but fine Ron Perlman is very likable. It was actually weird watching Ron Perlman in Sons of Anarchy because I was like, oh God, you're so, you're very good at this role. Like, I, I don't know if any of you guys watch Sons of Anarchy or not. Um, but Ron Perlman was a hell of a character on Sons of Anarchy. And like, he was very unlikable, but it was difficult because it's Ron Perlman and he's a very likable human being. This is interesting because it's destroy a creature and opponent controls. You're gonna ionize my interesting. Well, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Have you seen Stephen King Sleepwalkers? No, I don't think so. Also, the the Guillermo del Toro Guillermo del Toro uh, Hellboys were amazing, and um, that's all I have to say about that. I'm going to put you to one. Uh, Guillermo del Toro did both Hellboys. You can tell. They have a very, very similar style. Guillermo del Toro's style is extremely noticeable. Here's a Spider-Man uh, 300. First appearance of Venom. Graded 8.5. In case you guys were interested. Pretty sweet. I'm excited about this. Origin and first full appearance of Venom. Eddie Brock... And the last time Spider-Man wears the black costume. Well, at that at that time. At that point in time. So. That's another good one. Someone said it's clobbering time. And that's funny because right in the, the top it says 
thing appearance. I don't know if you guys can read that. Thing appearance. So, it's almost like you knew, Doug. Uh, unexplained disappearance. You're going to bounce your own guy. Okay. I wasn't sure if they were trolling us or if they were just, like, waiting. Or if they actually had a decision to make. They're going to go to one here, though. So, they play a Crackling Drake, and they have to deal with two other guys. Secret Wars is the first appearance of the Black Suit. Uh, that's not the first appearance of Venom. So, Secret Wars... <laughs> <laughs> Secret Wars number 8, 9.6, is actually the first appearance of the black costume for Spider-Man. It is not the first appearance of Venom. So, you know, similar, but different. Mm -hmm. You know, see? <laughs> My powers are amazing. <laughs> oh, that, that went well. That was quick. That was a quick uh, hop back in this game. Thing appearance is what the nurse said when I was born. Wow, that's incredible. Ah, uh, this hand's a little slow, but I'll keep it. I'll deal with it. I mean, we're just going to top take a burglar rat into a... Oh, my mouse died. I have to plug it in now. It's literally, there's so much Japanese candy on my deck right now from Kerwit that it's actually difficult to do things. Have to admit, Spider-Man 3 is probably my favorite movie in the first... What? What was great on Secret, Secret Watt 8? What was that? That was barely English, JTH. Uh, this is the first appearance of Spider-Man's black costume. The first symbiote costume. It says, origin of Spider-Man's alien symbiote black costume eventually becomes Venom. Also, one thing that drove me crazy as someone who's been in the editorial business for eight years is that it actually says, eventually uh, becomes Venom. There's no A in eventually there. And it tilts me to no end. Come on, CBCS. Get your, quali get your quality control under control. So, Secret Wars 9.6, number eight. All right. Shut up. One, eat the candy, eat the candy, eat the candy, eat the candy buck. Wow. <laughs> That's, oh, I like that you just donated a buck to pay me to eat the candy that you shipped me from Japan for free. That seems like... That seems like the most value you can possibly get, right? Uh, okay, no legal targets. Done. F6. Uh, no, I'm not going to use its ability, because we already went over this. No targets. What was the grade on Secret Wars number 8? I literally... It's 9.6. It's a high one. It's a high one. It's a 9.6. It's two grades lower than the highest possible grade. Tens? 10.0s, 10, 10s are extremely rare. Um, there are very, very few of them even in existence, I would say. Uh, 9.8 is the most common grade you're going to find for a, like a near mint, like great condition book. Um, well, this is awkward. Get rid of Prey Upon here. OCD much? Wait, who me? What did I do? What grade would you give... Swole Mike, Mike, and Hat Mike. Swole Mike, I would probably give a seven. Uh, I think that's that's I think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, Hat Mike, I would probably give seven point five, just because I've known Hat Mike longer and I think he has he has his life in order at this point. Uh, regular Mike, I'd probably give like a five to. He's still got some work to do, but I think with a little a little pressing or. Um, a little minor restoration. I think he could. Mike has the potential to easily, easily hop up to a much higher, much higher grade. You know, like you do. Oh, music, Mike. Music's like like a an eight point five. I would say. Andrew, Andrew is uh, 
Andrew is killing it. Mike looks like the most like a baby making a much closer to mint condition. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Good night, 1010. Good night, 1010 chat. Oh, we have a good time. The sea was angry that day, my friend, like an old man trying to send soup back at a deli. That's what's known as a good show. Um, We're going to keep this, and we're just going to keep up Pax Favor. We're going to get in there with all our boys. Give us all grades. We need this. Yeah, well, you know, listen. Here's what you, here's what you do. I don't know what I was going to say there. I literally had no follow-up for that. I just want to say, here's what you do, and then not say anything afterwards. That's how you get them. They're at 11, and we have nine power on board and a deadly visit. Seems good. Would you rate us 210 out of bitch? Yes, I would. That's the most common rating for our stream, as you know. So my answer is yes. Got him. You did got him. You did got him. George is getting upset. Oh, you're just going to kill that guy. Okay. That guy looks like that guy had a deadly visit. Did we just get wrecked? I think we're always getting wrecked. I think we're in a constant state of wreckedness. It's going to be a land. Oh, it's a severed strand. Not a land, but a severed strand. That's a little wrap I just made up in case you guys were interested. So they put a Dowser of Lights into the graveyard, but they kept the other card. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is, guys. Yep, seems good. Okay. Oh, that was a good that was a good boy. So they're just a Golgari deck with fine finality. That's nice. If we're in a constant of wreckedness, are we actually getting wrecked? Um. Oh no. The actual the process of getting wrecked is not happening. Huh. That's a good. That's a. That's a. I appreciate the philosophical uh, nature of that question. The actual action of getting wrecked is is not is not present. Oh, that guy's dead. This is a situation where if we kept the Pax favor and used the deadly visit... Oh, Lurcher? Yes, please. Graveyard. Lurchy boy. Little show. All right, we're just going to attack here. And then we have Lurcher off the top. We can also sacrifice Beast Whisperer to kill a thing if we want to. We'll n probably never do that. Yep, here we go. Six cards. So you get an Assassin or a Swarm Guild Mage. That's not terrible. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, Siege Worm, eh? Fascinating. <sighs> I'm actually tempted to hit this guy. They have three cards in hand. I have no idea what they could be. Why is it every time I forget that I'm watching live? You're too consistent. Is that true? Is that true? Oh my god, this is happening right now. Drelix, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back. Four months already, how time flies when you're having fun. I feel like we just saved this. I don't really want to sack a 5-5. Five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight mana. I think we can pass here. Although if you have... Like, this lets us get in for two more, but this guy being alive means they gain two life a turn.
This is an interesting situation. This could have gone either way. That's not great. I'm not super impressed by that guy at the at this current juncture. Frank, top three Marvel Universe characters. Uh, I'm a big fan of Winter Soldier. I'm a big Sebastian Shaw Winter Soldier fan. Uh, I think that would be in my top three. I'm not going to put him in anywhere because that's that's hard to rank. So we're going to say Winter Soldier. Seven mana, huh? Okay, that's fine. Winter Soldier is one. Um, Stephen Strange, otherwise known as Doctor Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, is two. Oh, that'd be nice if we didn't... Uh... Actually, do we just die here? 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No, we're not dead. If they want to spend five to activate this... A little shop. Okay. Um. So we got Stephen Strange, and and Winter Soldier, and Golgari Locket. All right, they have no cards in hand, so they're. I think we're good. All right. Let's do. Let's do the thing. Midnight Reaper. We can play Midnight Reaper. Draw a card. Severed Strand. Something. Draw a card. Which movie was Golgari Lockett in? Um, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, okay, so we got... What do we have here? One, two, three, four creatures? Hmm. Let me pop these graveyards out. They have no cards. They're going to draw two. One, two, three. They could gain four. They could gain two life and draw two. Is this when you cast it? Is it lets you cast it or put it into play? You may put the green permanent card from the on the battlefield. Okay, so you're not casting the second one. How do you think the Teen Titan show looks on the DC? I think it looks not great, but I also don't think DC looks. I don't think the DC products look great in general. So, like we have, I think our two options are either Midnight Reaper, draw a card, sack the Midnight Reaper, draw another card, gain two, um, or just play Hatchery Spider. And likely do nothing else. I think we want to err on the side of Midnight Reaper because let's just draw a card and keep mana up. But if we're going to sack something, I'm pretty sure I want it to be Midnight Reaper. So I don't think I want to get rid of either of my 5-5s. Five no, that's not ideal. Like, they're going to go to three, so they have to block both of these. Which seems good for us. Because Swarm Guild Mage is going to put you up to five here. And I wish we had the Midnight Reaper, but... You could double block here, too. So I assume you're going to gain two. Yep, go to five. We get to keep a five-five, though, which is nice. But they're going to get a four-four out of the Pelt Collector. Oh, Monsanto, it's like we're on the same page here, buddy. Yep, seems good. We still have Beast Whisperer, too, so we get to draw cards for both of these guys. And I'm very okay with that when they're at 5 and we're at 21. And they hit a land. Seems good. Mm, that's good, but I'm not super concerned with it right now when you have to block this guy. And you can't actually pump here. So you could double block and we're going to trade one for one. Prey Pond's in the graveyard, so we're not going to need that. Um, Yeah, I think we're just going to try to hit more cards. Spider's great, but if we hit another land, we can actually play Spider as well. Assassin is good. I'm going to play Monument here. Try to hit a land. Severed Strand's also very good. And now we're in really good shape. All right. 
If you could pick one story arc, any character to have made into a movie, TV show, what would you choose? I would choose... Uh, I would actually choose the Dark Avengers, Dark Reign, Secret Invasion storyline for Marvel. And um, it appears that they might actually be making that soon. Yeah, that match went pretty well. I think we're good. I almost want the second Prey Upon, but I think we actually did fine there. We have a lot of good value in our deck. I'm just going to submit. I don't think we're... I don't think we need Undercity Uprising. We don't need Crawl Foragers or Vigor Spine Worm, Vigor Spore Worm or Siege Worm. We don't need any more worms. I think we're all wormed out. I'm going to keep this hand. Midnight Reaper is a very, very good value. Plus, we have two, three drops. I think that's fine. It's funny. When I draft Izzet decks, I end up going one, two. When I draft Golgari decks, I end up doing quite well. Two drop. Two drop, I say. I wish they would replant Splinter Twin for standard. Why are you the way that you are? What's wrong with you? Court of Owls could be good too. I could see them doing any Snyder Snyder Batman storyline and it being very, very good. They have a bunch of tutus. I don't really like playing this guy without having a dude to put it on, but. I guess I'd rather play that than expose Midnight Reaper. I'd probably just take four here. I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't even care. Did I just block? No, because next turn we can play Midnight Reaper and have Land Guy Guy, so we can both have Midnight Reaper and Pax Favor up, so that's pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. All of this, all of this is just fine. Plus, if this guy dies, then we have a lot of value anyway. Yeah, this seems good. Yeah, <laughs> I wish we could have that standard combo that uh, they banned in like a month. Well, that would just get banned again. What's the point? Excuse me. Just that guy, huh? Okay, I'll block and draw a card. Seems good. I'll choose this guy. Oh, it's your boy. Can I draw a hired poisoner? That'd be great, just so we can get instant value off of the Beast Whisper. Ooh, look at that creeper. Not excused. Sh wow. Sheesh. My bad. My bad. That's my bad. I don't like energy because it was a re it was like a secondary resource for magic. What do you want? Hire poisoner? Oh, generous stray. What a generous stray. This guy is problematic though. I guess we could have played this guy. I don't know. I just want to get Beast Whisper down because I'm greedy. Yeah, like I said, I don't like energy because I don't like that magic would supply a secondary resource for games. Because that's kind of weird. Oh, that's really rude. I guess I'll draw another card. They have no cards in hand? Oh, wow, this is great. However, they do have the five mana to make this, like, next turn they can go four, five, six. And we're at nine. That's pretty scary, actually. I guess we could just double block here. I guess that's not great though. Or we can just draw like Prey Upon or something. We didn't. We did not draw that. 
Hmm. Can we all take a second to appreciate the facial expressions of the generous stray? Yeah, he's really... Alright, gain your two. Gain your two life. Nope, you should be reattached. There we go. Um, I can't imagine attacking here and going to six. They're at 22. Yeah, I'm 100% activating this at this point. I'll double block here. It's not great, but it gets the stupid Midnight Reaper off the board, which is probably ideal. Actually, yeah, that's fine, because we're going to take two anyway, so we're still going to go to six, but then they have one dude. And this gives us a much better chance of finding something that will kill this. So we can go Generous Stray, Severed Strands, or Lurcher, sever, Lurcher Prey Upon. Or Okran Assassin. That's good too, I guess. It's not that good. And got a hit. Nope, did not hit. Alright, well we still got Generous Stray, so... Not dead yet. Now we're dead. All right. We had a good run. All right. So, Watcher in the Mist. I'm probably just going to bring another Prey Upon in, just because I do want to deal with Swarm Guild Mages and Floaty Boys. Floaty Boys. I got the Pax. Actually, Pax Favor is good with Ochre and Assassin. It's just nice to have. Take out the Necrolisk, maybe? Yeah, that seems fine. Actually, maybe I don't care about the Hired Poisoner. I like the Necrolisk. I'll take out the Hired Poisoner. We already have three Death Touch creatures here. I think the 4-4, that can become bigger. Play Worm instead for combo? What does that even mean? Um, I'd rather... I mean, this is also a combo, right? So I'm taking out a, a six-drop card that's... Kind of mediocre for a combat trick that's very versatile. That does the same thing, basically. Uh, I don't love this hand, but I'll keep it. Any any swamp is good times. That was a great draw. We're very good at this game. Because now we have at least three things we can play. Probably going to lead off with the Spinal Centipede. Because even if they want to attack into this guy, this is totally fine. Up tight. Everything is alright. With all the answers to Tron Lands and Standard at the moment, I always scared them. They're never going to bring Tron Lands back to Standard. That would never happen. If Wizards of the Coast is under the R&D... If R&D is under the philosophy that cards like Farseek and Rampant Growth are too strong for standard, you're never going to see Tron lands in standard. This is fine. I'll trade with the If you want to trade with this guy, that's fine. Could have also preyed upon onto this guy and played Night Child of Night. That's actually not terrible. Because any other creature is going to make this guy bigger, so just getting it out of the way is not bad. That's good because it's not it's not Evolve, so it's not going to make that bigger. That's nice. That's nice. Three, so you can double block here if you want to. You can double block if you want to, but I don't think that you will. Because you don't double block, and if you don't block, well, then you just take the thing. I don't, this song is going nowhere. I'm sorry, guys. Yep, didn't think you were going to do that.
Uh, almost hit OK again. Play this guy. All right. I feel like we're in good shape here. Celestia Guildgate. So they're just splashing blue and white. I don't know if we saw what the white was splashed for, did we? happening deadly visit on a gorgon that does not seem ideal i mean we're also on three lands they're on one two three four six mana sources land midnight reaper that's actually great i will definitely play that not f6 anymore yeah this is a fine trade it prevents you from doing some some shenanigans. We also get to draw a card. Gain two, lose one, draw a card. Gain one, draw a card. Get rid of your generous stray. Don't hit a land drop. Okay. They're also dead on board. But where are you going to get more Gorgons? That's what I ask myself every day. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, where am I going to get more Gorgons today? I still don't know. But I'm, I'm working on figuring it out. Mm. Whoa, they just main phase cracked the lock and I think they're dead. Oh, man. Good times. 2 0 with the Golgari deck. Golgari! Someone mentioned they were eating brownies yesterday and I reasonably left my house. I reasonably left my house at 11.45 before my close at 12 to get sodas and brownie mix. Two boxes. That is normal, right? Um. So here's the thing, Matthew Ari. It's not abnormal. <laughs> You're like, brownies? I have to go. This is the next book in the, in the box. We got an Amazing Spider-Man number 361, the first appearance of Carnage at a 9.6. Carnage part one, it says on the cover. This and the first appearance of the Hobgoblin, the 238, are I bought these together in a lot on eBay, they were ungraded. I actually thought the uh, the first appearance of the Hobgoblin was going to come back higher than it did at 9.0, but I think 9.0 is still good for a 30-year-old book. Almost 40-year-old book? Jesus. And um, 9.6 on this was great, so I'm I'm very, uh, it's very okay with that, so. First appearance of Venom, first appearance of Hobgoblin, first appearance of uh, Carnage. I'm, I'm okay with those. First appearance of Kingpin. I will keep this hand. It's a little slow, but that's fine. First appearance of James Franco? James Franco doesn't play Carnage. In any iteration, I don't think. James pl James Franco played Harry Osborn in the in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. James Franco, that's pretty much the extent of it. Or else just guess Dave Franco is the next Harry Osborn? That's pretty funny. Franco played the Hob... No, Franco did... I don't think so. I don't think there was a Hobgoblin in the Raimi ones. I think he just played Gob... Hob... The regular... I think he just played... Green Goblin again. Yeah, just because he's not, just because he wears like he's a different goblin, doesn't mean he's not. Doesn't mean he's automatically a hobgoblin. We 
We got some goblin races in chat. Oh, all goblins look the same, I bet. Okay. T typical. Hashtag not all goblins. The, the the IMD says new goblin. Yeah, because like because he never announced himself as the green goblin, so like he's just a new goblin. A new gor gorblin. Uh this guy's gonna get large. We're gonna play this just to disincentivize you from attacking with this guy. You probably will anyway, or you'll just direct current this guy and wreck us, but Yeah, that's that's good too. Ain't nobody got time for your shit, Boros. Mid, I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight reaper. That's not how the song goes, you friggin' idiot. What a dummy. Up, oh, land, pump, mentor, do the thing. Or just kill this guy. Oh, all right, there you are gonna do the thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna block here. Three, four is fine to deal with him. We just draw a card and kill a guy, kill a three, three. You know what? Because I don't wanna take six here and then have nothing to show for it, so. Oh, that's a good draw. Oh, that's not bad. That would be better if we had... Uh, now it's just a 3-3, three, three, so we're just going to play Assassin. We also have Pax Favor. Oh, so if they play something and don't attack, we can Pax Favor and blow them out. That's pretty good. I'm a Midnight Convoker. That's actually pretty good. I tap to help cast your creatures. It's not bad. Not bad. Oh, we've, we've, we've gotten past some of the Spider-Man portion. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so miserable right now. I'm such a... This is a first appearance of Kang. This is Avengers number 8 from 1964. This is a Jack Kirby cover, in case you guys were interested. It's the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. 7.5. Kang is one of my favorite villains. I think he's very underutilized in the Marvel Universe. And uh, I was really excited about this until they put a thing on it, so... Here we are. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can actually play Siege Worm next turn, which could be good, depending on if they have the, uh, you know, what's that? Whoa, that was a good draw. Oh, that was actually a great draw. Oh, that was a great draw. We're probably just going to do that. Severed Strands kill this guy, gain a life, and then play a Rhizome Lurcher, which is a 4-4. Four, four. Is that good? Oh, kind buds. Congrats, buddy. Way to go. I mean, you know. Oh, the death of Ned Leeds. We'll talk about some hobgoblins. Oh, wait, Ned Leeds. Yeah, Ned Leeds is the Hobgoblin, right? Yeah. Hmm. So we have two options here. One is put a 5-5 five, five down if they have anything else like... So if they have something, if they have another like Luminous Bonds or something to get rid of our guy, it's bad because we're going to end up taking four and going to four. I think this is correct. Because now if they have our, something for our guy, we end up going to f 7 instead, which is significantly better. And we get a 4-4 four, four on board instead of a 5-5. Five, five. Michael Keats! <laughs> That's, is that, is that, I can't tell if that was a, a typo or a nickname. I like it as a nickname better. Oh, they didn't play anything. This is good for us. All right, we get to play Beast Whisper and keep up Pax Favor, which is pretty gas, which means we get to just go Siege Worm next turn if everything goes well. This is where we turn things around, boys and girls. 
Old Mitchell Keats. You know, oh, you know, old Keatsy. Uh, I will take four. You're definitely not drawing. Deal four damage to you? Yes. That is fine. I'll go to five here. And this is where they untap, play land, and inescapable blaze our face, and we feel terrible about our life choices. However, if you want to discard a second card to draw three, I'm probably going to let you have it. I do not feel comfortable going to one here. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thought I was going to... I thought I called it. Whew. Okay. That was scary. I was like, oh, my God, you played a land. Because if they have a, f a sixth land, like... It's kind of awkward that you play it instead of discarding it to the risk factor. I mean, if you have a sure strike here, like, it is what it is. It doesn't feel like you do, but that was pretty good then. Um, I'm actually going to play land. If I have an option to keep up an extra blocker instead, I'm definitely going to do that. All right. <clears throat> Inescapable boar. Not inclusive to aliens? Did I say that? Here we go. I think we're... I feel like... um, Have it deal five damage to me and they get to say one card. Oh, God. Or they go to four cards. Guys, what are we doing here? Are we drawing? Are we letting them draw or are we taking four and going to one? I, I seriously don't know. This is not an easy decision to make. No, we're going to one here. I don't think they have... If they had direct current or something, they would have just played... They wouldn't have tapped double red for it. I don't think they have anything here. All right, this is how we're gonna do it. Put them to seven. I knew it, I knew that I was like, you're just gonna play Cosmotronic Wave, make sure I can't block. Yep, fantastic. Oh, never had, ne oh wow, Severed Strands would've been great there, gained four life and then we survive. Okay, well, seems good. Oh, I has a sadness. You were dead either way then? How is that even true? I don't even understand what that means. Thank you. Tom Clapton, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. I mean, if we went to five, if we were still at five life and they played Cosmotronic Wave, we would have taken three and went to two. That's not dead. Uh, I don't like the Prey Upons with all the Death Touch just because it makes them two for ones. Like, if we have the Death Touch creatures, they should be good enough on their own, you know what I mean? This hand's great. Oh yeah, let's... Uh... Lucky, 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 lucky. It makes me wonder if they top decked it, because like they're if they had cause them, they get at least one more creature in the three cards they have a turned away. Yeah, right. But if they don't, then we're not dead, and we also would have drawn severed strands, so we could actually kill a guy and gain some life. So, I mean, no, like we weren't dead by any metric there, because Magic Online is it lets you draw more cards. Like it would have given us more time. Like, that's like saying if they drew their whole deck, then they would have surely had creatures to kill you. I'm like, yeah, but I also get draws too. Favorite keyword on a creature? Hexproof. 100% hexproof. Just kidding. Never hexproof. Um, favorite keyword on a creature? That is a good question. I'm not actually sure. I don't know. I don't know these things. Um, I 
I was thinking flying. Flying seems great. Like flying is a great mechanic. It's not it's not super overpowered. It's not used it's used uh what's it what's the word I'm looking for? Um sparingly. I wouldn't say it's overused by any means. I don't really want a two for one here and kill any of these guys. This is why I don't want prey upon, right? I have no, I have no reason to. Um, I, I just don't have any incentive to like. I can just block this guy, and it's the same thing as preying upon it, right? Like the the best part about prey upon is that like you have a five five, and you can kill their four four with one card. But I don't really want. To, it's not a two for one, I guess, because midnight reaper. But I'm still losing a card. It's still. I mean, it's still the same same concept. I'm drawing the same card whether I kill my creature or don't kill my creature. So I'd rather not lose the prey upon to do it. Ornery Goblin is a good two drop. It's very, very good. It's I think it's uh it's unassumingly good. Really? This is what you're gonna do with your life? Well, that's sad. It's gonna be a rhizome loacher. Oh, an assassin, eh? Okay. I feel like now I'm definitely going to attack here. No blocks. See, now this is valuable to get a counter on this guy. Because now, if you play any creature, coupled with the Ornery Goblin, we can just kill it. Boros Challenger and a Tajik is a good that's a good turn. Alright, so I just get to kill both of these guys, presumably. Definitely would have attacked with this guy. You know, if I was you. If I was use, I would have definitely attacked with this guy if I was use. This is a fine trade. And by trade, I mean I kill them both. <laughs> Sky Knight, are you attacking? It's so aggressive. Super aggressive. I think I'm just I think we're just way ahead right now. They're at nine. And we have a deadly visit for whatever whatever nons. What is the best tricolor planes? Cons or Alara? Um That's a good question. It's gotta be cons because they have Sultai. Let's not be let's not be ridiculous. Look at all these creatures you're playing. My god, I'm gonna kill the good one. And I'll put you in the graveyard, but I will draw the cat just because it's a cat. We can draw a card from it. Go to five. Khajiit has wares if you have coin. Khajiit has had enough. Oh no, not a little piggy. See, now I feel like we're in worse shape because, well, you know, obvious reasons, really. Kitty cat. Do you have more double black cards or double green cards? I don't think we have that many of either. We're probably going to hit a severed strands here. It was a forest. That's what I meant. When I said severed strands, I meant forest. Pax favor would be amazing here.
Just going to keep the land in hand. They are dead on board, so that's good, right? What are the odds they hit a fifth land and have something really good here, though? Come on. Don't be ridiculous. Oh. Oh, no attacks whatsoever. I like it. Well, it's okay. We have no... Uh, No plays whatsoever. I don't feel like this is a good attack. Like, if we can draw... There's multiple cards we can draw where this card is just... Better to have on board. Now, if we draw, like... Harvest Spider. Harvest Spider? Is that what it's called? Wow, if you can only have one, the Elder Scrolls 6 or Game of Thrones final season in 2019, what do you choose? Dear, that's a, that's a rough... Would there ever be an Elder Scrolls 7? Because if that's the case, then I'll just take I'll take Game of Thrones. I'm probably going to take Game of Thrones. Cuz I'm already invested in Game of Thrones, whereas like I'm not invested in a new Elder Scrolls, you know what I mean? Well, this is actually fine. If you want to just block, I will do one for one here. Gets this guy in the graveyard, and also this guy's a 4-4 next turn with Menace. If it survives. You know what, True Detective Season 1? I, of course, I've watched True Detective Season 1. Time is a, is a flat circle. True Detective Season 1 was great, and then I, True Detective Season 2 I just couldn't get into. And I've heard Season 3, I don't know if it's out or not, but I heard Season 3 is good or might be good. Oh, that was that would have been good. Followed by just lands. Lands forever. Lands as far as the eye can see. Uh I think we're good. I don't really see any cards on our sideboard that I really want in the deck. I could see bringing Prey Upon, but as you can see, like, we have a lot of X twos and they have a lot of two twos and two threes, so like it's just a two for one. I think 90% of the time it's a two for one. Oh, this hand. Oh, it's so bad. Do I keep it? I don't even know, dude. Oh, yeah, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know if I keep it or not. It's not to say. It's so bad. We did it. We did a good thing. I'm going to keep this on top. We're on the draw. Eh, card's too good to ship to the bottom, I think. And all we need is one land to start really going ham. And, like, we have a lot of life gain in our hand, which is also nice with Child and Crawl Foragers. Don't have Ornery Goblin, I guess, and we'll be fine. Yeah, that guy's a good trader for the Child of Night. Okay, Severed Strands. We have one more turn to hit a land. Hundred percent block this guy. Hundred percent. They did not like that idea. They were like, "No, don't. No, don't block." I mean, we're coming at you, bro. We're already ahead. We're already winning. Here comes flying boner night. Uh, till four. Yes, I will take four. I really only took two because of Child of Night, so let's let's keep it up. <sighs> oh, some uh, some heavy refreshment ASMR for you guys. Flying Boner Night was the theme of my last birthday party. Are you guys gonna be able to make it to Flying Boner Night? Oh, Cosmotronic Wave, you got it. That's a one for one. At a very good rate. Green! Oh, it was not a green. Oh, I'm so sad. I has a sad. I guess we'll just attack first. Ch 
Child of Night, minimize the risk factor. Hilarious. I'm a fan of what you're what you're saying right now. There's a lot of English words coming out of your mouth that I am a fan of in the order that you're putting them in. Look at all my death touchies. They have three cards. They have two cards now? They have one card in their hand? They're so dead. All of our creatures are death touchies. Um, do we have any way to pump? No, so we're just going to trade with this guy. Do I want to take five? Not really. Oh, well, that was a good draw. If we hit another land, we can crawl foragers, gain at least at least three life, presuming one of these guys dies. Or if they don't die, I'll, I'll be more than happy taking two damage, or gaining two life instead. So basically, they discarded a card. Oh yeah, let's do, let's do this for sure. We're definitely doing this, bad boy. Well, that's a that's a that's a dude. That is a dude I will kill with this guy and severed. Tr oh, prey upon. Maybe we will just prey upon it. Yeah, prey upon does the same thing, right? They have no cards in hand now? This is working out quite well. Well, the Prey Upon Death Touch would come in handy. I mean, I did have one Prey Upon in the deck. I'm not saying it's useless. I'm just saying I need... I'm just saying I need lands. Yikes. Well, anything damage-based, we're in good shape because we can save this guy with Pax Favor. We also have a removal spell for anything they play. We have some life gain, and we have a nice top end here. So I think we're in good shape. Oh, incoming like seven drop monster. This is where they're like, Aurelia, give it haste, attack you for four. And I'm like, oh, QQ, don't do that. Yeah, I don't care about that. There we go. Now we're talking. Draw a card, gain four life. So literally gain enough life to uh, circumvent the next the next risk factor. That seems good. What's your... Oh, they didn't actually play risk factor. I totally get your point and agree. I just think it is funny that whenever you talk about something, it comes up in your game right away. Four, four, gain four, draw one. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is like half a Muldrifter. Oh, I see. I see what you're doing here. Wow. Huh. Um, I kind of just want to get rid of this and then kill this. I think that's actually fine. We could take six and go to nine, which I also think is not terrible. But what's our plan next turn to deal with this if we don't? Like, we don't have a creature. Um, no, we don't have a creature next turn. I guess we can trade next turn. We're going to gain four, so we're only really taking two. Yeah, this seems fine. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty good. Draw two. <laughs> oh, kitty cats. Ooh, you are so great. Um, Shark creature and pawn controls. Let's make sure we did this correctly. Choose target creature you control. All right. Sack. Actually, sackually, we'll keep the green up so that we... Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. It, it's That's irrelevant. Kill this guy. Pay these two. Yeah, gain four. Sure. Oh, we can still attack! Oh, I'm terrible at this! Oh, demotion. Dang it. Sorry, guys. I got demotion and, like, I just assumed it was luminous bonds or whatever. So, um, we're actually not going to attack because... Well, then we can't keep our thing up, and... Yeah, attack first would have been better. Maybe not even attacking... Actually, just attacking in general would have been better and sacrificing this guy. That's probably a huge play. Misplay. On our part. But I don't think they're in great shape to attack here, so... That was pretty bad. That was me just getting locked in our head. Like, I'm trying to survive. And... We got one, two, three, four, five, five. I like our odds here. 
Get to draw a card. Hatchery spider. Don't whiff, hatchery spider. I just need the value. <laughs> okay. Gain five. Put a 4-4 four, four into play. Draw a card. This is probably going to do. You know, like you do. I think we just recovered nicely. Mistakes were made, but uh, hell, what do I want to do? Uh, I'll take four. To the surprise of no one. There's definitely some value there. Uh, that's the end. All right. 3-0. Not too bad. Nice recovery from the 1-2. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys are watching on YouTube, I'm not leaving. Or on Twitch, I'm not leaving. If you're watching on YouTube, I am unfortunately leaving. But I will see you guys next time. So be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on Twitch and Patreon. Links are in the description below. And if you need some undies, like you do, I know you do, you can check out meundies.com slash It's My affiliate link is in the description below. You get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. And you can get some sweet Star Wars glow in the dark underwear. I don't know what you're waiting for. I'll see you guys next time. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching.